Bokeh O. It means good light, but that is the response to good morning. Um, Isha H2, good man. To two means good. Two is actually what we call the um, participle for end. In Hebrew, we say end. Uh, but in Hebrew, we say the. The other and you. And remember when we were studying, we studied the participle the for end. I told you that we have rules when we want to fix or preface the V in front of where a word to say and something. So one of the rules is the bomb rule. When the word begins with B, M, and P, you can say V man. We use sh uh, shurek. We put a dot in the belly of the bar to sound like O. <coughs> And the moment the next letter that comes after it is name. Anyone who knows Hebrew knows why you didn't say the man. Because men will not take um, a verb and a shiva in front of it. That is why we say the bomb rule, whenever um, we want to face the interrogative, sorry, the conjunction ends in front of a, a word, and the word begins with name, pay. Uh, bomb, name, so, sorry, beat, meme, or p. You use the shurek. That is why we didn't say the man. We say o man. The next word is naim. Naim means either pleasant or nice. Naim means either pleasant or nice. Nice to meet you. Naim may have you, may have you, Ota. Nice to meet you. So, Naim means nice or pleasant. Pleasant. Eta metapuzim Naim. The orange juice is nice. Naim means something that is nice. We are going to learn this song. Shevet. This is Naim. Naim means nice or pleasant. Shevet is to a chef, to six. So, Shevet means to six. Ahim, Ahim means brothers. And Gam also means also. Also. But Yahad means together. Yahad means together. Oh, on our screen, we are not going to add the heading She Hama a lot with the Vid, with David. We don't need that one. We need the song. So the song goes this way. He may see, not who, how good, woman and him, and pleasant, and how pleasant. Chevet and him, six brothers, also together. That is literally see how good and how nice or pleasant, six together, also, no, six brothers, also together. That is the literal meaning. Ine means he or watch. Matu, how good woman in and how nice or pleasant. Shevet Achim, six brothers, Gam Yala, together. Yes. Please, um, can you use the pointer so that you are okay. sisters? Yes, thank you very much. Um, here I am. There's that word. We mean here I am. Depending on the context. Man is how. So is good. And I told you we should have been the man. But when we're studying the um the Particle end of it. We told you that when it is preferred to a word that begins with beat, meme, and beat, it turns into shurex. That is why we have a dot in the belly of the bar. It means and how. Naim means nice, pleasant, shepherd, 
due to sex, Achim Evades, Gam is also Yachati together, where it means see how to and how pleasant sit together, also Vades. Who well, the English translators translated this as um, see how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together. Actually, share also with well. Uh -huh. So the song goes this way. In so we can try this one. Let's sing it together. In the matu kumanim, sebe kanim kamba kanim. In the matu kumanim, sebe kanim kamba kanim. In the matu kumanim, sebe kanim kamba kanim. Sing it alone. At least two people can mute or mute themselves and sing. In the matter. Now listen again. Hey, do you see some hundred and thirty three verse one on your screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you yes. see it, please? Yes, please. Yeah, so we are not still, we are not adding the she have my lost like lady B. We are starting with me. He may matu, he may matu, humana in this sign. It's all he said. It's a sign of who's the he did. He may matu, humana in heaven. And this is final fruit of in the matu kumana in sevetan gam jaha in the matu kumana in sevetan gam jaha. When we go to Israel, every Saturday we sing this one when we go for Shabbat Shalom. That is the Shabbat meal. You would have to sing this song. In the matu kumana in chevetanigama. In the matu kumana in chevetanigama. So there is a continuation by the same way. In the matu kumana in chevetanigama. In the matu kumana in sevetanigam jahat. In the matu sevetanigam jahat. In the matu sevetanigam jahat. In the matu sevetanigam jahat. I ne matu shabetahim ganam jahat. Then the men, the ladies will sing. I ne matu. Then the men will respond. I ne matu. La 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 la. I ne matu. I ne matu. La 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 la. I ne matu kumanaim. That's why I don't like teaching online because before in class it becomes easier. But when we have 100 kilometers away from each other, the vibe is different. In the matu kumana in 
Seven ayun gang jahat. Ini matuku manayin. Seven ayun gang jahat. Ini matu. Seven ayun gang jahat. Ini matu. That one. Kita ini matu. Then jam terima tu. Si sebet angin tak jahat, ini matu. Sebet angin tak jahat, ini matu, ini matu. Pala dah pala lai je sesam, pala la 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 la. Ini matu, ini matu. Pala la 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 la. Ine, ine matu, sebet ani kap jahat. Ine matu, sebet ani kap jahat. Ine matu, ine matu. La 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 la. Okay, let me see whether I can get the video. Then we move on with our lesson. Um, hey, this one is uh, you win the national youth musical contest. So. My voice today, I've used it to eat up a party. <laughs> so, we should get uh, some of our people who are singers to help us so that we'll bring it up. Maybe next year we can add it to the team's voice of painting. Then, who is going to get standard thing? I let this thing for us. Uh, yeah, so uh, those who sing, they, no, those who have to sing to help us sing. Why this one is a popular song. Ini mata dan if we are using earpiece, it might affect you both. You should be careful with this one. Be careful if you are using earpiece. Ya ada sambil tengok mohon kerja di sini. Hold on, I want one without addition. Okay. Let's listen to this one.
Sir, the original sound can't be heard. All right, thank you, class. Let us pray as we continue our lecture. Abba Bashamai Manach no Modim Lecha. To Dali to Rain Hazut, share a thousand and be more bricks. Bolimut Ivrits, and Nasmu Mipalelin, be la tete talimudim shalanu be yadi, and Nasmu Mipalelin shall thousand lanu be having koshe et amore shalanu be la med o tam. We manachmu mudim hitef, yahad anachmu umil to die. We see me sure Nasmu Mipalelin. Amen. Ami, 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 Shalom. Amen. All right. I think this song was not just um, used in class for using sick. It's for a purpose. The first purpose is for you to get the words and also know how to sing it. And it will benefit you somewhere. So you can just take a screenshot of the words. And in your beats and in your sleep, be singing the song. He may matu humanae, Shabata him dam yaha. He may matu humanae, Shabata him dam yaha. He may matu, he may matu, while I love you, I love you. In the matu, in the matu, la 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 la. In the matu, uru mana, shavet adim dam yahat. In the matu, uru mana, shavet adim dam yahat. All right, so I will let them sing for the last time. Then we proceed with our lecture. So the sound wasn't coming. The sound. The sound is not coming. Yeah, exactly we didn't said. hear the, the sound. So they were just dancing on the screen. Anyway, let me try. Um, first I find out where you want to use some flash. No, please. 
No, sir. Can we hear the sound? No, please. Um, the host, is there, is there something you can do about it? My laptop. Oh. Uh, but I need to talk to Okay. You got to hear them. Uh huh. There are several alternatives. There are several people singing this song. So search for the one with the man with golden head and guitar, wearing short sleeve. I think they did a good job. Okay. That is fine, then we can stop so. So far, we studied about Hebrew verbs. They are just like English verbs that uh, verbs are those words that tell us what to do, or they express an action or something that somebody has to do. And you've seen that there are some kind of difference when it comes to Hebrew verbs and the English one, because English, the form that we have in Hebrew, we don't have it. English, we just know of tense, participles, past tense, future tense, and imperative uh, verbs like go, come, walk, with these instructions. But in Hebrew, they have all this form. And the past, the present, the future. But in, apart from they having the normal forms we have in English, they have other forms that they appear. And Pa'al alone can be past tense, has it past tense, has it future tense, has it present tense, has it participle, and has it, um, what do we call it, imperative um, form. The same thing after Cal, Cal or Pa'al, Nifaltu has it present, past, future, and, uh, and imperative. If you come to Peel, it's the same, Pu'al, the same, he feels the same, Ufal, the same, and hit Pa'el. But just that these are some kind of forms that these verbs sometimes may appear. And you need to know the forms, the seven forms that I use the minora, the lampstand to show you the active form and the passive form and the reflexive one, so that when you meet them anywhere, you know what it is about without struggling at all. Okay. Sorry. We are moving on. Now I have explained to you that the verbs, all verbs, have three, some say three literal roots, some say three consonantal roots, and we use letters to represent them to teach, so that when we change the vowels, it will be easier for you. We have strong verbs, we have weak verbs, and a verb is called weak not because it is expressing with action. But just the presence of a gotra in a verb makes that verb a weak verb, a weak verb. Then the presence of a gotra means that verb, a weak verb. And a verb is also said to be a strong verb when it is made up of only um, vowels, sorry, consonants that do not have any of the gotras. 
and the groceries are, are rich, iron, heat, heat. So we told you that the example I gave on the board using the root for the word for verb in the Hebrew, which is to R, which is pay iron lament, is an example of a weak verb. But usually when you want to teach about some verbs, many people will use those verbs that do not have any actual, like atar or pakar, which means to visit or to kill. And through that, the same binyan or form that I pass you through, you can use katar to form it, and you can use pakar to form it. If you are using katar, the katar form katar, the nifal form will be niktar, the pa form will be kitir, the kutar, uh, the kua form will be kutar, the hifu form will be of, ofa. Uh, sorry, hitir. The hifu form will be hitir, and the ofa form will be hoktar. The ofa form will be hoktar, and then the hipayel form will be hik katir, hik katir, hik katir, hik katir. So all that we have done, you have to know now is that what is the root in the verb? Once you know the root, then you ask yourself, what has been prefixed to this form? Is it moon that has been prefixed? Is it he that has been prefixed? Is it he tough like hits that has been prefixed? And then you use your ears to also follow on the changes that has occurred in the um in the vows, in the vows, you hear he feel, then you hear who fall, then it tells you that the changes are okay. You hear PA, then you hear Pua, it tells you that the changes are okay. That's okay. That you need to watch out. So I showed you this, showing you where we have examples of weak and strong verbs. The first three, shalach. The first root consonant is shin, which is a strong letter. Lamed, which is also a, the second root consonantal letter, which is also a strong um, letter by hit. Shalach, the sound, hit is a weak um, letter. So we call the shalak, the he means it a weak vowel. Shalak means to send. Ga'al means to redeem. We have the first gotcha, sorry, the first letter, the second letter, the third letter. The first is gimel. The second is aleph. Aleph is a gotcha. Lame is uh, not a gatra. So the presence of Aleph made this one to a weak bow. The same with halak. Halak means to go to walk or wherever. So we see that the consonantal letters are presented with the Roman numerals I, 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 and I, I, I. And this one too is a weak bow because the he starting the halak is a Gatra, making it a weak. But pakat is a strong vowel. Pakat means to visit. Uh -huh. So we call a strong vowel because both consonant that comes together to form the root, that is P, O, dialect, are all strong consonants. So it makes it a strong. I have taught you what is active, what is passive. What is reflexive nouns? I think we may have this two in English, but the form may differ. Uh, in Hebrew, we use the the So the endings. On the screen, you see that car 
should have also been for her. But we saw, we see what the added. These ones will tell you whether it is active, reflexive, what we have added. The vowels together with the prefaces will help you to know what function these vowels are. Now, we call this form that we have studied, they all appear in the perfective, but there's another type that appear in the imperfective, but we are not studying imperfective to be. And even that is just showing the third person must be singular. We are not studying imperfective in this syllable. Imperfective simply means it is in the future tense. So for instance, in the car form, it is also identified by your ears. It is the sound that you know that, oh, in the imperfective, this is called imperfective. Yikto. So in the car form, in the third person, when we say third person, like he, she, him, but this one we are, is for masculine. Whenever you begins any letter, that is why you see you go, go, go. It means he will come or he will kill or he will destroy or he will smash, he will destroy or he will smash into pieces or he was caused to kill. So in the imperfect form, this is how in the third person must mean singular, it appears. Uh -huh. But we are not studying this one today. A time will come when you are doing further studies in Old Testament, you will be taught this one. So it told who mean that he was killed, uh, he will kill. Yikate means that he was absolutely um, killed by someone. In that form. So you will just use will. You will kill, you will be killed by someone he was totally killed by someone. So that one, you just translate all this one into future. But we are not studying the future form or the imperfect form. What we have studied here is also called the car, the default systems, also has its imperfect forms. But we will go to what I mean by What this book is telling us that when you go um, to the Hebrew lexicon, Hebrew dictionary is called lexicon. And for instance, you have read Bereshit Bara Elohim. Let me open to Hebrew chapter Genesis 1 1. And let me read something to you. The receipt Bara Elohim as a main. Hold on. All right. So, for instance, when you go to the Bible, this one, 
That's when the car or the paar, the vowels will change from kamat, pata to kamat, kamat, and sometimes even something else. For instance, when we read Brishit, bara, bara is the example of car. Brishit, bara, Elohim. Brishit means in a beginning. Bara is a car verb. And it is perfective because it is expressed in the past. And it is a completed action. So we call it perfective. Bracet, bara Elohim, et tashamayim, fi et haaret. It means in the beginning, it should have been barashit, but they said rishit. In the beginning, bara means created. But when we check from law, um, Hebrew lexicon. I told you that Hebrew dictionary is called lexicon. It will tell you that the meaning is to create, to create. It wouldn't say created. So always that is how it appears in the dictionaries. Uh -huh. But when we're translating the knowledge of bara, otherwise, if it is in the future, it will come to by you that Yivra. But while the youth is not there, and you see it in this form, it means it is example of cargo. Uh -huh. But when you go to the dictionary, you wouldn't see created, but you will see to tweet. That is what the book was trying to explain. Um, now let's go back to the book. It's disturbing me. All right, so this is your book that you have. And that's what it was explaining to you. You read the Hebrew Bible, you see bara, but yet when it has to meet up, it is said to create, to shape, to form. And it tells you what verbal form it is. It tells you that it is car, and it means to shape, to fashion, to create. Always with God as the subject of heaven and earth, of an individual man, of a new condition and circumstance and transformation. Then it tells you that in the Nifal, which would have been Nivra, Nivra, it wouldn't be Bara, because Nun will come in front of the beat and it would be Nivra. It would have been translated, translated to be created. To be created. And then it tells you that in the PA, where we say bire, bire, because PA, the sound change to I and E, bire. So we come to cut down, to cut out. In the Hifir, it would have been hmm, Hebrew. It would, it would mean something else um, to make. And yourself fat or something. So don't be bothered about that. But he's telling you how when you open your dictionary, you see the various forms appearing in your dictionary. That's whether there are any other thing to study. And I told you that in this lesson, we study only the perfective. That is um what happened in the past things usually we will not study the imperfective 
for participants, we have studied it. Infinities, do, we won't study it today or in this week. Bolishna, we won't study it. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to learn about conjugation of the car. Conjugation of the car. We call this one pronominal conjugation of the car and pronominal surfaces. So we want to conjugate the car perfect. I will explain it on the board before we come to um, screen sharing. So let me get out of the screen and explain what you are going to do. Okay. So Carl simply means we are looking at conjugation of Carl verbs. Now, in Hebrew, they don't waste words. In Hebrew, they don't waste words at all. Uh, for instance, if I want to say I killed, in English, you need to write I before you bring the kill. If I want to say, you killed the man, I killed the. If I want to say, I, I killed the man, I have to bring the subject I. Then I continue with the perfect verb killed, and then Transitive verb, which is objects. This is a transitive verb, which is objects. I killed the man. I destroyed the pen. I disappointed. Not only I, you can even see he. You can even put the here. The disappointed profit. You realize that in English, all the time when you want to say I killed, he destroyed, or the disappointed. You have to introduce the subject, but that doesn't happen in English. Better, so let me just use one verb to make it clearer. I killed the man. We killed the hen. The killed Kofi. I killed the man, we killed the hen, they killed Kofi. You realize that in all these instances, the pronominal, uh, what do we call it? The independent personal pronoun or the personal pronoun I, which is used for a person in the first, we call it first from a person once, Yes, meaning first person common or singular. First person singular. First person common singular. Common means in Hebrew when they use ani. Ani is for both male and female. So that's why they say first person common um, pronoun. I. 
first person pronoun I, but in Hebrew, they call this one first person common because you can say, I am a girl, I am a boy, and all you use an E. But when you say you are a girl, it's at. You are a boy, it's at. They are not the same. So in English, you need to always apply the personal pronouns. I, we, they, you. Mm -hmm. You killed the snake. You killed the snake. So this is what happens in English. But in Hebrew, it is not necessary to always provide the personal pronouns. You can only add the personal pronoun as a surface. When we say something is a surface, it means that you add a, a letter or a word to the main, you, like, you add the letter to the main word to indicate the pronominal independent surface, what we call personal uh, pronouns. You just add the letter, you indicate the personal pronoun. So if I want to say, um, I came, I came, anybody, you came, you came will be butter. I will explain you understand. We came, but no, and all those things. So let's see how it works. So in English, there is this mnemonic way of learning the pronominal surface. Apart from the first one, which is third person masculine singular, the other one, this uh, paradigm, you need to memorize it. When we apply it to the verbs, you understand what I'm doing. So don't be confused. Yes. There is a way to learn the phenomenon, we call it phenomenal surface, because it is adding the independent personal pronoun to the verse to say, I came, she came, they came, we came, you came. And you know that in Hebrew, we have both masculine personal pronouns and feminine personal pronouns. So the paradigm goes this way. It is this way that we add to the verse to express the idea that you came, I came, we came, they came. And the paradigm is to memorize this in your head it, by just listening to the sound. Ah, ta te ti. You understand why you need to memorize. U tem ten. Ah, ta te ti. U tem ten. So that in essence, when you ask to conjugate with this sound in mind, you will easily do it. Ah, ta, ti, ti. There's always dots in the taps. There's always dots. Ah, ta, ti, ti. U, tem, tem, mu. Ah, ta, ti, ti. U, tem, tem, mu. Ah, ta, ti, ti. U, tem, tem, mu. I was being, so the ah is for 
maybe she did something. The ta is for you did something, which is for a man. The t is for uh, you did something, which is for a woman. The t is for I did something, which is for both men and women. The u is they did something, which is for both men and women. The ten is for you plural, masculine. Second person plural, like certain men, you did something. When you want to tell them, you kill him, you destroy him, yeah. you use. 10. When it is you for female, you use 10. When it is we, you use me. So let's see how we will apply this format. It is only the third person masculine singular that don't have any of this paradigm. Because that one comes in a formal form. But the others, you you put these words at the end. This, um, what do you call it? Letters at the end of the verb to express I came, you came, I came, they came, we came. So let's see A Tati O Temtem. A Tati O Temtem. Let's see how you apply it. Now we want to use the verb Qatar. We know Qatar means to kill. This is the roots. And the cow verbs we are doing Conjugation. Conjugation means bringing the cow verbs, breaking them down into their phenomenal units. Whether to say I killed, you killed, they killed. When you are breaking it, the way you go about adding the surfaces to it is what they call conjugating. So conjugating cow verbs. You do a lot of exercise today on this before we close. So we want to try the verbal root for kill, kata, which we are familiar to be. So with our knowledge of how do we say he killed? The first one that begins is he killed. So he killed. We saw that in the cow form, the first vowel is hamat. The second is kata. So the moment you write kata, just this word, just this word means he killed. Then you write, I told you that the feminine one is kamat he. So what we have added to the root is kamat he. So now the vowels will change. The moment the ending comes to it affects the vowel because the accent now shifts to the last syllable. So this one, instead of being maybe katla, it will be kat. Katla. Katla, yes, katla means ah, the ah is now starting. Katal is already fixed. We don't have it in the mnemonic device I just showed you. So katar means he killed. Katla means she killed. So we call this one third person feminine singular. Third person feminine singular. We call this one third person masculine singular, meaning that we are adding the third person pronoun to the verb kata. And that one is just like this kata. It means you killed. So always all the verbs are in the third person masculine form before we then conjugate it into the other form. So katao means, just this word, means she killed. Otherwise, if you want to say she killed, then you bring he, since he means she. If you say he katao, it's just an emphasis. You will see he, she, she killed. That is what this one will be translated. She, she killed. This one to Katal means he killed already, but if you dare say who, remember last semester we learned the independent personal pronoun. Who means he? So if you say who Katal, it means he, he killed, because just Katal means he killed. Just Katla means she killed. They know which words, but in English, you have to bring the he, which is who, before you bring the Katal. You have to bring he before you bring the Katla. But in Hebrew, it is not like that. Just the presence of Kamat 
Quarter at the beginning, it says all the forms begin in the third person must be singular. It tells us that this means she, uh, he killed. And then this one says, Ad Kamati so Katla, she killed. So this is now started. Ah, the next one is Ta. If you want to say he killed, this is the root. Itarta. It means that this is the second person masculine singular. You killed. Yes, this word, Pitata. Hello, sir. It means that you killed. Hello. Or oh, it could also, sorry, it could also be Katarta. Sorry. Katarta. Katarta. It means you killed. You killed. If you want to say she killed, ah, the ah sound is here, the ah. Ah, ta, ti. The T sound is this one. If you want to say second person feminine singular, that is you for a woman killed. You woman, you killed. So the root is calf, calf, lament. So it could be car, tax, the tax. So atati, katar, katla, katarta, katax. So just this word will mean Hello, sir. You, you, this girl, you killed, or you, this woman, you killed someone. You killed the cock. You killed the hen. Katat eta. If you know the. If you for a bed, you see Katat at her oof, you killed the bed. Hello, sir. We can see the second person feminine singular on the board. Can you see now? No, please. Oh, you can see this one. Yes. Let me see. Is it okay? So no. it's still not, no, please. Please let it go up more. Okay. Oh, it's almost time. So this one is this. This is the root and the thing is there. So how do you see second person feminine singular? You killed. How do you see you killed? How do you see ka tax? You don't need to say at katax or attack katata. At Katax, you don't need to say who Katar, he Katla, Atta Katarta, At Katax, you don't need to say that. But if you say At Katax, it means you, you killed, you, you killed, it's emphasis, you, you killed. Uh -huh. But by just saying Katax, Atati Katax, it means that a lady has killed. And you are addressing the lady in the second person, feminine singular. The FS is feminine singular. You, you killed. Or this woman, she, you, this woman, you killed. You, this girl, you killed someone. Uh -huh. So that is about Ata T. The next one is the T. Ata T. So you just bring the word, the roots, which is Kata. So it will be katarti, katarti. Katarti means I killed. And we call this one first person singular, uh, common singular. First person common singular because a man can say katarti. I killed the bed. Katarti eta oof. 
a woman too can say, I call the bed katati et auf, and both of them will be using the same T, katati. Usually, when we have colored marker, we use color, col the colored one to mark the ending. Uh, but unfortunately, my marker has disappointed me. So that is why we are where we are. So kata, katla, katata, katat, katati, katati. I killed. So they don't, they don't, they don't use words. They don't waste words. Now we move on to say, if you want to say they killed, that one is also third person. Um, yeah. First person plural. Who? Hello, sir. The who sound. Ah, that it is. Who tem tem. So you bring the root calf, calf, lamed. Calf, tits, lamed. Sorry, hello, calf, hello, tits, lamed. Yes. Please, the left side of your board cannot be seen. The, where you are I standing. Should do what? Please, can you tilt the board uh -huh. so that we, where you are standing, we can see the board to your side. Where you have the second person uh, masculine singular. Is it okay? Uh -huh. Is it okay? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Ah, the ah is here. Ah, ta, ah, ta, titi. Now we move on to who? Oh, Katlu. Katlu. Ah, ta, titi. Who? Oh, Katlu means this one is. Third person. So plural. we can't see that. Um, person plural. Common plural. Third person common plural. Katlu means they killed a, a group of women killing a bird. Katlu et a oof. A group of men killing a bird. Still cut. So we have a tati u. So katlu. We have katal 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 katla katarta katal katalti katlu. And in the university too, others find it difficult to just use the mnemonic method, which I think is the easiest way to memorize this. Kind of conjugation, uh, car perfect conjugation, car perfect conjugation or car verbs in their perfect conjugation. I think this is the easiest way to get it. But some people too, they will bring the independent personal pronoun. They want to say who kata and he katla, ata katata, at katat, ani katati, him or him. That's you. They want to study by that way, but I think by just getting the mnemonic method, it will be easier. Unless I clean this one to add the remaining three. So let me clean this portion. I'll take you through the books and you see how these ones also work. So the next one is Temtemi. Tem. So the root is kata. So he tartem. He tartem. You use your ears to also get the kind of vowel that you come under it. He tartem. He tartem means this one, we call it second person masculine pura. It means you, for instance, men or boys, killed the dog. It atem et a kelef. It atem et a kelef. It atem 
זון, כי תעתם את הילדים, כי תעתם ילדים את הכלב, we get to that, no more, so כי תעתם ולא מיס, you in the plural sense, like good morning to you, when about seven people are standing in front of you, they are all men, you can say good morning to you, in the same way, you kill, you can just say כי תעתם, and it means you kill, in the plural sense of the second person, and um, personal pronoun. Well, uh, for the, in the plural sense. So after 30, ooh, 10, 10, the next one is 10. So guitar 10, you write the roots and it's guitar 10. Guitar 10 means also second person, feminine plural. You women, you girls, we did A, B, C, D. So the last one is me. A, ta, te, ti, u, ten, ten, ni. So, ta, ta, ni. So the last one is me. No. So you write the roots with ta, ta, ni. Ta, ta, ni. Ta, ta, ni. So Katarni will mean, we call this one third person common, hey, sorry, first person common, first person common plural. We killed Katarnu et Yeladim et Anahas. Katarnu Yeladim et Anahas. The children killed the snake. Katarnu. Okay, now we we'll go to the booth. And revise what I have taught you on the books. Now, I don't want to teach only the board, board because when you go back, you see I taught it on the board, but you couldn't understand. But as I take you through the books as well, it will remind you of the explanations I have already given on the board. That is why I'm using these two approaches. Let's go back to this book and see whether we have examples. If not, we'll see. So you see, the third so we are looking at how perfect conjugation. Conjugation is how you break down the words into their um, pronominal unit, pronouns, pronominal units. And here we are looking at how we add personal pronouns to the verbs, you say, I killed, you killed, they killed. The word katal means killed. Mm -hmm. So I told you that all the verbs start with the third person must be singular. So that one is not our burden. You don't add anything, the third person must be singular. That is why it is not in the A, T, 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 U, T, T, N. You see, it doesn't start with the catal, it starts with the third person coming singular, which starts with a, ta, ti, ti, then u, ten, ten. So let's go through. Tal preferred conjugation. Kata means he killed. Katla means she killed. Katarta means you singular boy. Second, masculine singular, you singular boy. You killed. Katax, second feminine singular, means you, a single lady or a woman. You killed. Katarti, first person common singular. It means that I, one person, I killed as a man or I, as a woman, I killed. Katarti, because they all use. See, that is why we call it common. First person common, singular. The next type of common is the katlu. Katlu is he killed or she killed. So he killed the snake, katlu, Abraham, etanahash. Katlu, Abraham, etanahash. Katlu, Abigail, etanahash. Katlu, Rifta. Rebecca is Rifta. Katlu, Rifta, etanahash. So in Hebrew, usually these verbs 
they come first before the subjects in Hebrew. That is why we have Bishit Bara Elohim, created God, not God created. Usually the verbs stand at the head of the word before the subject follows. So the verb will come first followed by the subject. So we have Katlu means she, he killed or she killed. Then he tell Tem, U Tem Tem. U, the cat, cat U is the U. Then we go to Tem Tem. Itar Tem. Itar Tem is second person masculine plural. You boys or you men, you kill. Itar Tem. Um, Victor the Prince. Etana Ash. It means Victor and Prince killed the snake. Second person from Nipuro. It ten. Abigail the Rifka. Etana Ash. It means Abi, you, Abigail, and Rifka, you killed the snake. You killed the snake. Tatarnu is first person common pura. It means we. When you want to say we kill the snake, we can say Katarnu, Abraham. Prince, Igram, Ahimbra, the Arbets, Etana, Ashkatarmu, we killed. All these people have mentioned, are saying that they killed or we killed animal. They are using the first person common to us. Look at the big words written in red. Memorize this chart. In exams, I can give you the roots. I can give you just these roots, and I will ask you to conjugate it into um, conjugate this root. So when you hear conjugate this one, all that I'm asking you is that add the phenomenal surfaces, and you should use two seconds to finish this. So if I say car perfect verb conjugation. Conjugation is past tense. Passing is we spell passing like this. Conjugation. So conjugation means pass them into their various units by adding the personal pronouns. So I want you to see he did something in all that. So what word did I do right? Okay, provided I ask you to conjugate this way. Conjugate this root. In the car form, you know that lama is already fixed. You can't do anything, but the rest you use the idea of art at a t u temple. So you just quickly lama, then ah, ah is lama t, and the root is lama name dalit. So it is the that. board is shifted. Yes, sir, we can see. Is it okay? Is it okay? Okay, Lama, Lambda, A, Ta. Lamad is the root for learning. Um, can made is to learn. So Lamad means she learned. Lambda, sorry, Lamad, he learned. Lambda, she learned. Lamad, ta, you learn. Lamad. Lamad. It will also mean you learn for a woman. We have R, 30, 
The next one is T. So, Lama D T. Lama D T. <clears throat> Lama D T will means either I learned or as a man or I learned as a woman. After T T. The next one is B. The third person comma. Bura Lama D me. Elamdu. We just say lambdu. You can uh, lambdu. Ah, that is it. Lambdu could be she studied or he studied. Lambdu. Then ten ten. Ah, uh, my detail. Sir, please. The board is still not clear. We can't see the down one. Ah, uh, my detail. You can see. Right. Okay. Oh, the one you've written down, the down one. This one. This one. Yes. The, you the guys store. see this one? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Ah, that is. The root is this. Lamat. After the T, the T is I. The root is this. Lamadi T. Then the next one is the ten ten. The ten is this one. Lamadi ten. After the T, U ten ten. So the ten, the one that ends with ten. The, the root is Lamed name Dalit. La Maditen. Maditen. The last one is new. So we can see where you are writing, please. You can see. Hey, so I have see. bought <clears throat> tripod and webcam and all this and so on. Is it talking? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The last one is me. Ulame mean that it was me. Ubila Madi. Oh, La Madi. La Madi. So this are when we say conjugates. Some people will not say conjugate, they will ask you to pass. P A R S E. Pass um, the following verbal roots into their phenomenal surface. And all that they are asking you is to break down, break them down into this. So now when you pick a book and you are reading, you will be looking for these verbs and you see them. But when you see them, usually the subject, the verbs will come first. And then the subject will rather come after the verb. For instance, Abraham studied Hebrew. You would not see it as Abraham, Lamad, Ivrit. Hebrew is Ivrit. Abraham, Lamad, Ivrit. No. It would rather be Lamad, Abraham, like uh, Bara Elohim, created God, Breshet Bara Elohim. This one to be Lamad, Abraham, Ivrit. It means that. Abraham studied Hebrew. In the exams, don't translate it as if you see Lamad Abraham Ibrit, don't say that studied Abraham Hebrew. No, it is wrong. I have translated as word in English. So as the command still remains under the chat, memorize this chat. It is very important. <laughs> memorize this chat. It is very important. So you see, the perfect, the perfect catalog can be used to describe 
completed or definite action. You can use it to describe completed or definite action. This can be translated in the past tense, as I have done. I limited you to the past tense because that is what I've taught. I limited you to the past tense. I wouldn't go into the present tense and the future tense or future perfect tense. You will study that one later. That one too, there will be additional. You add prefaces. But these ones, we have added surfaces. Surfaces are those um, characters or letters that you add at the end of the word. Mm -hmm. So in the past tense, most of the things that we add to the verb to say, I killed, I did this, I did that, are all in the surfaces. You mm -hmm. add it at the end of the word. And I think that is okay. This is example of the uh, future tense or the yeah future as I said. So we visit this book again when I need something from it. Um, I think it's 1210. We will pause here and relax. Tomorrow, God willing, we'll continue with more examples so that you acquaint yourself with it. Now ask, show me which book to read. I'm going to the title of the book. Introduction to Hebrew Verbs. Introduction to Hebrew Verbs. It is on elements. But one of you should pray to end, end the class for us. Any question before we do, please? Any question before we close? Are we together? Okay, there's something in the box. The sound is not good. I'm not hearing the sound is good. Any question, please? No, sir. Okay. No, okay. My Ask questions. Ask questions. Past questions. Are you saying past questions? No, he said we should ask questions. Uh, okay. Since silence means concern, you end here. But as I, the first assignment for today is that the test that we read in Hebrew, go over it again. Inematovu manayim shevet ahim kamiahat. It is a song and it is also a spiritual test. How beautiful and pleasant it is for brothers to stay together. It is like an oil poured on the head of you that story or that passage in the Bible. So study it. And the second assignment is that go through all that you are going through today. Tomorrow, come with more questions. The third assignment is that download Hebrew interlinear. Bible from either um, Apple Store or Google Play Store and read the whole of Genesis chapter one in Hebrew. Try it. As you are reading, try to see whether you will see some of these verbs in what you are reading. Okay. Um, Pastor Prince, or can, can you pray to us if you are with us? Yeah. Yes, please, I'm around. <clears throat> okay, please, we are praying. Father, we are grateful unto you for such a wonderful moment. You have, by your power, uh, led our teacher to take us to Hebrew. 
We know that it is not easy, but your grace will continue to abound for us. We commit students ourselves in your hands. Help us that even as we go through the understanding of what you want us to get will be our portion. We know that you, by your divine wisdom, we will be able to accept. May you protect us again by the grace of you that tomorrow we also have a fruitful lecture. We thank you for this privilege in the name of Jesus. We are praying with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Yeah. Okay. God. It's a nice prayer. God bless you.